we have developed an MRI breast screening form for our practice that we feel provides valuable information about the patient. Some of the important things to recognize on this form are the patient's weight, all patients must be weighed, and the contrast administered based on the patient's exact weight. We have a section for imaging parameters. We have implemented a variety of protocols in our practice and have found this section valuable to reference which protocol was used on each exam. We have a section for comparison MRIs, mammograms, and ultrasounds and list when and where the exams were completed so we may know where to obtain them from in the event the patient did not bring them. We like to know about any palpable lumps, biopsy areas, or lumpectomy sites to enable the radiologist to correlate this area with the MRI. We note redness, swelling, infection areas, and nipple discharge, along with the discharge color, which could be indicative of a serious problem. We recommend patients be scanned between day 7 to 20 of their menstrual cycle if they are not taking oral contraceptives, with day 7 to 14 being the most optimal and day 7 to 10 for patients taking oral contraceptives. In our practice, we have found it very important to have the patient stop taking hormones for 30 days prior to their exam. We also recommend that they do not resume taking them until after they have received the results from their physician. This is important to ensure if the patient needs to return for additional images or a biopsy that they are not delayed another 30 days. Premenopausal partial hysterectomy patients should be informed that there is a possibility that the radiologist may request them to return two weeks after their exam to repeat the contrast images only. Explain to them that the optimal time to scan a patient is day 7 to 20 of their cycle, but this is an unknown factor in partial hysterectomy patients. Therefore, if it is determined that there is a lot of hormonal effects on the dynamic scan, then we have found the patient returning two weeks later would put them in a more optimal time of their cycle and decrease the hormonal effect. We have found it is helpful to list the patient's family history of breast cancer and the age that the family member was diagnosed as it is helpful in assessing the patient's risk factors. Chemo and radiation treatments may also alter the enhancement curves when the radiologist interprets the exam. Therefore, making note of this is very beneficial to them. We also have diagrams to illustrate any lumps or scars in order to provide the radiologist with as much information as possible. There's a sample breast screening form in the document section at the end of the lecture to view or print.